And so that's when I discovered fertility awareness and that's when I started charting. And so that really helped me for the birth control aspect because I was able to use condoms. I was able to use fertility awareness and that was very effective for me throughout my whole 20s. Can we be uh, personal? Can we talk sure. about you? Sure. Right? Because um, I'm but just reflecting know. from... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy gossip, woman. Uh, no, because I, I, I'm remembering vaguely that, you know, this is probably one of the reasons why you went into this because you had a personal experience. No? It is. Uh, so I was one of the teenagers who was put on the pill. <laughs> And I was probably, it was probably when I was 15, because I started my period when I was about 14, so 15, 16. And so my very first period was painful and very heavy. So I had primary dysmenorrhea, but I was very active, you know, high school, basketball, track, volleyball, ballet, leotard, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Leotard is not a good place to have a heavy, heavy period. <laughs> Um, so, so basically I didn't know anything because I was a child. And so I had heard, you know, that when you go on the pill, your periods are lighter and easier. So I went to the doctor and I don't even think I finished my first sentence, you know, periods, heavy, painful, writing the prescription already. And so I went on birth control and it was like magic. So my periods then were light and they weren't as painful and it was manageable, but I've always been a thinker. So I was like, sweet, I'm fixed. And so I wasn't using it for birth control at the time. So I just stopped taking it. And then I would get my actual period. It was just as bad. So I would kind of play these games like every now and then. But so even though I wouldn't have had the language to describe it like I do today, I did know that it didn't actually fix me because I couldn't stop taking it. (laughs) And so then um, when I needed birth control, because I always had, like, I just had certain, there were th- certain things in my life that made me a bit cautious. Uh, my mom had a hysterectomy when I was growing up, and my aunt came to stay with us when she was recovering, and my aunt and her were having these adult conversations that I was privy to, and so my aunt had also had a hysterectomy, and there's all these women in my family who had had fibroids, so it was directly related to this, these fibroids that had grown really big, and so her periods were even like in terms of she didn't have pain, but she had a lot of bleeding. And so I witnessed all of this. And so I thought, uh, so the kind of thing just for anyone who doesn't, who's never experienced this, when you have big fibroids, it can make the the, the bleeding so much that it's like a flood. And so you like, you have to wear the, the tampon and the pad and like can still go through. And so there's like sometimes mats involved when you need to take naps and things like that, because it can be totally ridiculous if it's out of, if it, you know, if it's hasn't been controlled. So seeing this, I just had this, even as a young person, had the sense that, okay, obviously the pill isn't fixing it because it's like every time I come back off it, I still have this pain and it's still heavy. I didn't want to have a hysterectomy. I remember thinking like, I don't want to have a hysterectomy. Um, And I can see these women in my family that have had this experience. And so I was thinking to myself, well, I don't know what to do, but let me just try to, and I also didn't want to have difficulty having kids. I did not want to have a kid when I was 19, but I (laughs) wanted to have a kid at (laughs) some point. (laughs) Um, But so I had this thing in my mind. So this led me to make the call. I was like, okay, I'm going to use condoms when I needed birth control. Cause I was like, I don't know what's going on with my cycles, but let me see if I can figure it out. I don't want to be on anything that could mess with it. Like that was kind of my, like, I don't know what it's doing. And I don't want to be on anything that could mess with it. And so that's when I discovered fertility awareness. And that's when I started charting. And so that really helped me for the birth control aspect, because I was able to use condoms, I was able to use fertility awareness. And that was very effective for me throughout my whole 20s. Um, And I then also requested, aka demanded, my doctor to do an ultrasound on me when I was probably 21 or 22. And I do, I did slash do have fibroids, but I learned enough about what caused them, you know, the estrogen component, and then I have basically been on this path throughout my life to kind of not end up having, you know, a baseball size fibroid that causes me mm-hmm. to have all those problems. So, Um, The fibroids are still there, but they didn't prevent me from having children. They've never really grown, even though the doctor told me, guess what? Guess what the doctor told me (laughs) when I went? (laughs) Well, we we have to put you on the pill because the pill is going to make it so that they don't grow and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm not taking the pill. So anyway, so that's my experience. And so I feel like I did achieve what my teenage self wanted to achieve, which was I needed to, I didn't know anything, but I knew I didn't know. 
And so I intended to educate myself in the hopes that I wouldn't have to endure that same experience. Love that. And so, you know, knowing that you had fibroids and intentionally going off the pill. So what did you look towards? How did you help yourself? What were some of the strategies that you took? Um, I would say that uh, if I kind of look over the years and, you know, now the work that I do with clients, it's, it's essentially the same strategies that I support my clients with today. So on a very basic level, uh, you know, taking care of yourself starts with getting enough sleep, um, making sure that you are reducing your exposure to chemicals. So that was a big part of it for me because estrogen, you know, fibroids are an estrogenic um, condition, you know. And right. so understanding that excess estrogen and, and my cycles were also quite long when I first started this process, um, likely due to a combination of a thyroid issue. And I think that I have the genetics for diabetes, <laughs> just for the record. If I wanted to give right. myself diabetes, I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. Don't worry. We're on the same. Three of us. <laughs> yeah. Three out yeah. of three. I think yes. that's pretty high ratio. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. We're there. Yeah. We're there with if you. If I ate all the sugar, <laughs> if I ate all the gummy candy, my, my cycles would be significantly longer um, because of that's how More it painful. affects me. Yeah. And painful, both. <laughs> yeah. uh, because of the inflammation. <laughs> but so a big part of it for me was, um, you know, the chemical aspect. So really not using basically, you know, any products that are made for women, all of the products, right? All of the normal lotions and the normal um, Glade plugins, sorry, Glade, but like all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> anything with the <laughs> anything don't with be the sorry. Scent. I know. I don't. I don't usually yeah. name drop, but I, I don't. What else do you call it? It's a Glade plugin. All the fabric yes, softeners. Yes, you're stuff. right. You're right. It <laughs> smells lovely, but you're right. Like it's. Yeah. it's and it I doesn't smell lovely to me anymore. So they can make change. Yeah. No, no it I doesn't agree. smell. Yeah, lovely. we don't use any of those. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Agreed. So all of yeah, those so things, the cleaning products, right? the Xenos, all the Xenos, and then the mm -hmm. pesticides. So really cleaning mm -hmm. up the diet. Totally. And a big part of it for me has also been to uh, eat real foods as much as possible. So. As much as I can, it's not always organic, but, you, you know, I live in Ontario, Canada. There's a lot of farmers that make a lot of great food that, um, you know, the cows grow on pasture and things like that. So in, in our family, we do our best to, to do that. I get milk, you know, from a cow from a farm. So I do all of these things in an attempt to reduce my exposure to all the toxic shite, if you will. Sure. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and cycle charting has been a big uh, part of this for me as well, uh, just to always, so, I mean, we talked about the cycle as a vital sign. And I feel that, you know, for most women, they come to it for a very practical reason, if they're really going to go all the way down the rabbit hole and chart all their signs and use it for birth control or conception and things like that. Um, so you come for the practical, but what happens as you chart your cycles is you enter into a relationship with your body where you can actually pay attention to what your body's saying. So it's not like I'm having a conversation, my body isn't texting me, but if I eat all the you know, sugar and stay up all night, all the time and go on an alcohol drinking binge or whatever, then uh, when I actually feel terrible, but also when I see my cycle, maybe I see a really long pre-ovulatory phase or my luteal phase is cut short or I have raging PMS or, you know, pain because I did have severe pain for a long time. So kind of watching those things go up and down keeps me in check. I really can't go off the rails, like my body right. by, by tracking all these things. So um, hopefully that's helpful. But I would say those are huge, huge things. Understanding what kind of messes with your cycle, what um, causes hormonal imbalances, and also what helps your body to kind of flush and properly detoxify and um, effectively break down Harm, potentially harmful estrogens and things like that. Those are the things that have been really key to prevent the fibroids in in my case from growing because yeah, they're I, not I like they have not grown. Saying, which is so amazing. So people will think, oh, this is just the way it is and it's going to grow, right? Versus you're saying, no, just watch all your signs and see what impacts it, right? So yeah. it's not that you need to be 100% pure, but when you go off the rails, which you don't now because of tracking, right? Because you knew it's like, oh, if I do this, this happens. Oh, if I yeah. eat too much sugar, if I had like, 
you know, five chocolate bars in a day, I think that causes <laughs> pain. Well, I don't think because right? I, so the thing about pain that I've discovered, because so I used to rate my period pain because it was at like, I would say like a nine. Right. And so it's very easy. Uh, all I feel like all women do this. So maybe all is, but I'm saying it. So, you know, I didn't throw up though. So I couldn't possibly be a, t- right? Like we all, like, regardless of how bad it is for you, you always you know, oh, well, she has it way worse. So to put it into perspective, I have since had two children and I delivered them through my vagina. And so (laughs) (laughs) I said that that intentionally and there was no medication. I felt it. And so um, what I can say was that the first, um, like the first part of labor before I went into active labor was easier than dealing with my periods when they were in full force. Uh, right. Because with yeah. your period, I've said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so here's why in my experience, and everyone's experience is different. So with my periods, they were all day, like it was just yeah. all day, you're just screwed, like you're just, you know, I was on the floor, like I would, you know, it was horrible, terrible. Um, yeah. And it felt like someone was wrenching my insides. And there was no break. And then with the labor, uh, both instances of the labor, I would say the second labor was more like, like I, I did some acupuncture and it made it real efficient, but, um, <laughs> but, with the, <laughs> but with the first labor, it was very like the contraction would come and it, everything would contract and I would breathe and then it would go away. Yes. You get it right. right. And cycle. then it would, yes. yeah. So this, it was much labor was much was more easy. manageable. <laughs> yes, totally agree. Uh, this is and, a new and perspective. Love it. And this is unreasonable. Like it is unreasonable <laughs> to expect <laughs> that this is what we should deal with. So fortunately, through yeah. all of the similar things that I've mentioned, um, reducing the sources of inflammation. So first, the first step is actually understanding that it's, even though it's common, it's not normal and it shouldn't be this way and you shouldn't be in labor with no baby. Um, and that like we <laughs> yes. should demand more as women because this is not our yes. lot in life. And, you know, I get what you said in the Bible about, you know, Eve and this stuff. But no, I object. Um, the second <laughs> thing is under, like learning what it is. Like why is there pain? So if you accept that it's normal, you don't necessarily ask why is there pain because you just assume that that's just a part of it. So learning that women who experience the pain tend to have higher uh, markers of inflammation, like higher prostaglandin levels. Prostaglandins are the lipids that cause the smooth muscle contraction. So if you have upwards of four times as much as the woman who does not have pain, that can give us a clue as to why you are on the floor and she is not. And so understanding that there's a link to inflammation and also obviously in severe cases, it can be related to other factors such as endometriosis, endometriotic lesions, um, which is a serious condition that is related to infertility. And I feel like even just knowing that the pain could be related to something more serious means that we should take it more seriously. So understanding Mm -hmm. why and then what can I do about it? So if it's inflammation, if there's all these other things going on, how can I reduce my chances of that? And so that involves you know, like understanding where the sources of inflammation coming from. Um, I'm pretty sure that a good source for me was the conventional dairy products. I'm not anti-dairy. I still, you know, but now I buy the milk from the farm and I do my best to kind of mitigate some of those um, factors. But I think that that's uh, really important to be aware of, like the oils, all the different areas, all the different sources of inflammation, all the different, you know, sources of chemicals. Um, And so what I find, as you were talking about with like managing and kind of using the cycle as a way never to kind of go off the rails is that I don't have periods that are nine out of 10 anymore. But if I go off the rails and like eat all the bread or all the sugar or all the chocolate bars, which it does not happen very often anymore. But if I do, then the pain might go from my usual 0.5 to like a two. And for me, that's right. like, oh, we're not going there again. <laughs> so that's awesome. So you self-regulated. So just to recap, because I know that we're running out of time. So the recap is, you know, what you eat matters, your environment matters so that, you know, you're not going to load yourself up and be around estrogens, xenoestrogens, you know, estrogens or anything that's toxic. And thirdly, you actually also mentioned outside help. So whether it is someone like you that does the actual um, family, what is it called? A family, uh, 
Fertility awareness uh, method. Is that what you're? Fertility awareness method, right? <laughs> so, you know, we're going to have all your information in the show notes for sure. And um, you mentioned acupuncture. Is there anything else that you want to mention? Um, like as a resource for people? Sense? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would say that um, first and foremost, start to trust your intuition. I think start to trust yourself. If you ha- are having an experience and you don't feel right about it and you feel like there's something wrong with you, you know, this doesn't, this feels off. Um, I would say know that there's more than just your, um, there's not only one modality of medicine, you know, and so you want to seek that support. So whether it's traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, um, if you're going to your doctor, if you're going to naturopathic doctor, if you're seeing someone like me for support with cycle charting and a deeper understanding of what's happening with your body, functional medicine doctor, just know that you can form a team. And just like if I had, you know, a cavity, I probably wouldn't go to, I don't know, like I probably wouldn't go to a foot doctor. A podiatrist? Yeah, a podiatrist, <laughs> thank you. I wouldn't go to the podiatrist for my cavity. If you have a specific issue, whether it's with your cycle hormones, if you have something going on with the endocrine system, know that there, you know, there are people that specialize in those issues. And I feel like that might be the piece missing for a lot of women because often we go to our doctor for everything and expect them to yes. do it all. Love it. Thank you so much for being here and spending the time with us. It is so insightful and gosh, you're a breath of fresh air. So again, your book is called The Fifth Vital Sign. And again, it's behind your head for those that are actually watching the video. (laughs) And if not, you can check it out on our show notes. So you go to embraceyoufirst.com. So like, comment, share, subscribe, do all of it. And um, we'll have you back and we can discuss some more goodies, right? But before we go, we have to ask you a question. Yeah. How did you fill up your cup this week? To keep oh, that's a great healthy. question. Let me think. What did I do? <laughs> actually, you want to or know add to it? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm going to tell you. Um, All right. I actually, I actually uh, have a vaginal steam chair. I don't know if you talk about vaginal steams on your your your. Well, not yet, but we want. We will no, for sure. Are. Because, because apparently, yeah, we, I've apparently done it. we are now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Because, cause, yeah, because we, you like, asked. I've done that for fertility talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love but it. Because Love you it. asked. So I, um, TMI, <laughs> today is day one of my cycle. So yay, we're in a new cycle yay. today. And um, and so one of the things I actually did to fill my cup was do some steaming before the onset of my cycle. And I just awesome. find it to be, anyone who doesn't know, it might sound a little odd, but it's kind of like going to a sauna, except obviously it's for your vagina, but it's, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. So that's actually what I did Love it. to fill my cup this week. I'm going to learn about more about that. I totally want to talk no, to you about that. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I did an episode on fertility talks, actually. Ah, so you can check that out. We'll okay, put that in the show awesome. notes as well. But yeah, that could be something we can talk about. <laughs> yes. I don't know if we want to do the full show and tell. <laughs> well, and I, I'm probably the first person who that was my answer or that was the answer. I'm oh, probably. absolutely. Yes. And the only love, it. love it. Love it. Love it. But love I love it. it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll have you again. Mwah. 